What's up, you guys? This is One Classic Gamer here. Welcome you to my fourth playthrough video for uh, Resident Evil 2. Uh, when I say fourth playthrough, I mean this is the fourth run of the game that I'm going to be doing in this video with Leon. I did Leon B, and there are several trophies that I had to go for in order to get the platinum in this. I had to get an S rank. I had to get the small carbon footprint trophy, which is basically to make less than take less than 14,000 steps and I also got the frugalist trophy which involves you getting through the entire game without using a healing item this was actually really tough for me in my opinion so I'm gonna be walking you guys through a lot of different parts the parts that I particularly found hard if you've already played through the game at this point several times you know where everything is I'm not gonna walk you guys through everything we have to play through this on standard um, but in the beginning here when we come into this room, uh, it's a little different because Leon can basically find his um, police uniform. And there's really nothing huge here, just a, a, an, like one line of dialogue basically that that plays. But like, yeah, his uniform is, is right here and he puts it on and there's this little moment that wasn't here when you were playing this as Claire, which is pretty cool in my opinion, but not enough, you know, just... Honestly, a little thing that I wanted to show you guys, to be honest. Not ex exactly how I pictured bre breaking this in. Alright, now... <coughs> <coughs> he has a letter you can read at the beginning. Officer Leon S. Kennedy, on behalf of the RPD, congratulations on completing your training. Your especially high marks are to be commended, and we couldn't be prouder to have you as a member of our force. Um... This can be read straight from the beginning, basically, so I'd recommend looking at it. Please report for orientation at the Raccoon City Police Station on fr Friday, September 25th at 8 a.m. We look forward to serving with you, Raccoon City Police Chief uh, Brian Irons. Now here, this is what I recommend doing. I recommend for the, a majority of this playthrough using the Samurai's Edge, which is that pistol that I just picked up, and the combat knife, he, because the reason being why I recommend picking them up, there's also a new log here that we haven't read yet um, in the star's office. Um, the reason why I recommend picking it up is because it has infinite ammo and the knife can also be used infinitely. I also use the knife here on this boss that I'm going to try to walk you guys through on and I was actually able to get it back because when he died, the knife just spawned on the floor for me basically. But yeah, um, make sure you have the shotgun at this point. You should have no problem getting it. You all know where it is at this point. Uh, there's a grenade downstairs before you come into this room, like when you first come downstairs that you can grab and use against this guy. But yeah, doing this the way I did it is honestly kind of hard because I I had to get through a lot of this on with fine health and, you know not take any fucking damage, which is honestly not an easy task, as easy as you guys think. Even though we're playing this on standard, you know, it doesn't take many hits for Leon to be down, like completely dead. You know, if you were playing this on assisted, then, you know, here, here's where I use the knife, by the way, the infinite knife, and I thought that I had lost it completely, and I was kind of mad about that, but if you're playing on assisted, the game does give you aim assist, what I recommend doing for the all the shit that comes before this boss is just slowly going from room to room and using the Samurai's Edge, the infinite pistol, to take every single zombie out. Even if they look dead to you, take them out. Like, shoot them. Make sure they don't get up, basically. It'll make, you know, the later parts of the sheriff station a lot easier. Um, you will still have liquors to deal with, and I'll w walk you guys through those insane encounters, but yeah... Um, this boss in particular, just keep your distance from him, keep running away from him, and always keep your eye on him. If you've died enough times, then you know exactly, like, how this guy operates and how this area is laid out. Um, so it's not that hard, basically. It seems really hard, but it, it's just really stressful, and you gotta keep your eye on him constantly. But the one thing I've noticed about Birkin in this game, and I don't know if I'm right here, I, this is just me... I, based on my experience, what I've noticed is that with all three fights, all three times you fight him, 
you know, the more and more damage you do to him, the slower he gets. And what I mean by that is he still comes at you with attacks, but his attacks are a lot more sloppy and a lot slower. And you can usually stay a little closer to him here, but still, don't get too close to him. Just, like I said, keep running away. This is probably the one fight in the game, in my experience, where you're going to waste the most amount of steps on this guy for the carbon footprint there are other trophies that we are getting in this uh video as well uh for ada and um there's another one we're getting for leon or the lore reader for reading all the logs and then um there's one that we're going to get i believe there's another one we're going to get i can't recall right now but yeah basically just you know just keep your distance from this guy you know like he's not a hard boss to fight i apologize if i'm stuttering um Trying to think of the best way to give advice to you guys. I'm not really good at giving advice, to be honest. But he's <clears throat> about to be dead because his, that eye is turning colors, basically. Also, if you can land like a bunch of hits in quick succession, he'll usually like stagger back a lot of the time and you know fall down, and that'll allow you to get some more shots on him, basically. But just keep using the infinite pistol, you know. This being a small carbon footprint, don't go to places that you already know don't really have anything. I'd recommend looking up the codes so you don't have to waste the trips on finding the codes. Here I got the combat knife back. As you guys can see, it dropped it after I beat the boss. Um, but yeah, look up the codes. Take shortcuts. It's really not that hard. If this is your fourth time playing the game like me, you should have no problem conserving your steps here. This is The RPD station is where you're going to honestly go through the most amount of steps this is the next part of the game i found really tough but it really isn't all you gotta do is when you first come into this room kill all of these dogs here in the in the cages because they're gonna come out in a sec and when that happens it's not fun so yeah we're gonna i'm about to show you guys how to get through this without getting hits because the dogs and liquors are honestly really unpredictable and hard to avoid sometimes so it's better just to kill them if you can or sneak by them but here just shoot this dog make sure he dies so that when you're coming around you don't have to worry about any more dogs um, and yeah like I said this is another part I'm showing to you guys because I personally found it to be kind of tricky myself but when you come out here shoot this dog kill this dog make sure he goes down you know we are gonna have one dog chasing us for a little bit but I got lucky pulled the shotgun out and managed to take him out no problem because the video I saw the guy just ran right by him here and I thought I was good here but the dog actually does follow you in here um, so you just take the shotgun out and just blast him away you know if you're if you're yeah if you're good enough you should have no problem getting him here I got my first hit in the entire playthrough the dog lunged at me but thankfully, it was one of those weaker attacks that didn't do as much damage, and I was able to take him out, and my state here was still fine. So that was pretty smooth, if I do say so myself. This is the next part that I might, I honestly find kind of tricky here. When you come down into the interrogation room and get the next like uh, spare key for the locker and all that, and that whole puzzle, when you're coming back out, Mr. X is going to, honestly, he's probably more than likely going to... Uh, come after you here and you know like I said the best way to get through this game without using a healing item is to get through most of it without taking damage you know because and that's really really hard to do but here what I basically do is something that I did in the DLCs um, you're in a really tight corridor here so you can't run around him wait for him to come at you this is really really tricky to do but basically you're going to want to trigger him into doing a lunge attack, which I do here by running away from him and getting pretty close. And then once he does that lunge attack, you'll have enough time to literally run right by him and not worry about him fucking getting you, basically. Next uh, thing you're probably going to be doing is going into the weapons locker to get the... Uh, the inventory expansion, which you're going to need, I'd recommend it. Here, you're going to have a liquor here. So stop here at the end of here. Grab the um, the Magnum, which you get in the star's office. You guys already know how to get this thing. And just shoot this guy four times. And that'll take him down for you, basically. Go into the safe room. Create a save. I recommend doing that. 
And um, by doing that, basically, you can get into the weapons locker without having to worry about him. Here, this is the next tricky part. If you haven't boarded the windows up at this point, like I hadn't, you know, there are going to be guys here and liquors here. And the guys are going to come at you. And if you try to run away, the liquors are going to get you. So stand at the beginning of the doorway with the magnum and pop that guy's head off. The liquors won't aggro if you don't go past the doorway. Now, just keep walking here. Board up the window. Um, you can find boards several places in this, this playthrough. Um, come in here and just get everything you need. And, um, yeah, I was really struggling with this part. This is, like, the first part that I really struggled with. Uh, grab this grenade here. Um, like I said, I'm not helping you guys through literally the entire game. I'm just helping you with the parts that I personally found tough. So, what I chose to do here was just ground this guy with the shotgun and walk by him. And then walk out. And if you're lucky, you know... You'll be able to get by the liquors, no problem, because you boarded that window up and the zombies aren't going to come at you anymore. So just keep walking here. And I was able to get Mr. X into a, like a rare pattern here where he was somehow like all the way on the other side of the map. And I was able to take my time here and not worry too much about him coming towards me because it seemed like he really straight up just disappeared here. So... Yeah, come down into the secret room and create a save. Uh, if you haven't already yet, I would recommend going downstairs and using the badge to um, <clears throat> get the modification for the, the not the Magnum. It's actually not the Magnum. It's like the Desert Eagle or something. The Hawk, that's what it's called. Um, when you come into the library, I recommend taking all these zombies out. Take that guy out on the left and take this chick out on the stairs. Give him the double tap in the face with the shotgun if you're lucky and you're a better player than me, you can blow their heads away in one shot. You just have to be close enough and just do one shot into this guy and then, you know, be really, really fucking quick here, obviously, because you have no idea where Mr. X is. Like I said, I got lucky and I I was able to break him out of like a pattern somehow or get him into a weird pattern where he was like nowhere near me. Like, as you guys can see, I'm spending a lot of time here and I still have not seen him and I'm not even listening to the game either like I'm totally tuning out at this point in the playthrough but yeah uh, I figured I'd just show you guys that puzzle again if you didn't remember it but yeah because I'm nice like that so here uh, make sure you have a grenade uh, you'll find plenty of grenades on your path just you know don't do too much exploration but go to places where you know there are grenades which you should know because this is your fourth time playing this at this point and uh, it's really easy to get <clears throat> by Mr. X here just walk around him and then use your grenade here to get by these zombies basically this will allow you to get by these zombies without taking any hits so we're gonna be taking a break from Leon finally and I'm gonna be doing uh, Ada's half or side of the story where this little chunk of her of her story and the trophy that I'm getting here is basically to get through um, her entire like segment with just using the the EMF visualizer which is this thing basically it's super easy honestly and you can even take damage here because this is the only time you play as here as, as her so if you take damage it's not gonna be like the end of the world you know it's just gonna be annoying but you should be able to get through here no problem but I figured I would just walk you guys through it anyway um figured I should mention I don't know if I mentioned this I don't think I did but I'll I'll go back to it and just mention it right now since I have the time the samurai's edge the pistol the infinite pistol you basically unlock by completing the game with an s rank I think with any character I believe and the combat knife the infinite combat knife that will honestly save you out of a lot of encounters um, the combat knife, uh, you unlock by, uh, shooting all of the Mr. Raccoons, which we've already done at this point in the playthrough, and we got that whole trophy and everything, so, yeah, um, at this point in the game, like, I was almost at, like, 10,000 steps, I was at, like, I think, like, 9,000 steps by the end of this, so I was kind of freaking out, you know, worried that I wouldn't be able to get through this with the, the small carbon footprint, but... I did get through it, you know, I had like 13,000 and like 300 steps or something like that, so like 700 more steps and I would have been done, like I would not have been able to get that trophy and I would have had to come back, which 
would have been really, really annoying. Honestly, the most annoying parts about this game are the second half, which we're going to get into pretty shortly. Um, but, you know, there's some more parts that I want to walk you guys through if you're having trouble. I mean, they're the parts that kind of gave me trouble. But like I said, if you stick to the general rule of um, not doing too much unnecessary exploration, only getting what you need, um, and uh, basically by um, clearing out, like the first time you go through a room, clearing out the zombies and going slow and clearing them out, and also looking up all the, the code so you don't have to like come back and reopen the safes or anything like that. Those like little tricks and tips are, are what are going to like basically help you get all of these trophies in a row that I'm trying to get. I probably could have done this with the minimalist trophy too, but I, I didn't want to attempt it. And I already got that trophy with freaking Claire, so it didn't really matter if I got that trophy or not, to be honest. But yeah, this is the end of Ada's uh, segment here. Um, you know, the trophy is not going to pop until you go back to Leon, but I'm j literally just showing this to you guys anyway to help you guys out if you need the help or you've forgotten or something like that. Odds are, if this is your B-run and you've already played through the game twice before like I did, this is your fourth time playing through the game. So you should know the deal by now, where everything is, how to solve most of the puzzles. And like I said, if you don't, just look up the combinations. Like you can look up the statue puzzles too. You know, basically you don't need to collect any of the clues or anything for the puzzles. You can solve them right away if you know the codes and the combinations and whatnot. So... Yeah, um, basically, we're just going to finish this, and this is a really, really easy part. Not hard at all, so, yeah. Ada is, like, practically stumbling at this point, but yeah, just turn left. I don't know if this really matters that much, but every time I go around a corner, I'm always trying to, like you know, be as close to the wall as I can so that I don't waste my steps. But yeah, when you get here, you guys know the deal at this point. The whole cutscene is going to trigger. And then when you go back to uh, Leon and his cutscene is over, the trophy should pop up at that point. So there we go. One slick super spy. And I believe now we're going to be getting the... Um, let me see how many steps I have. I have 8,178 steps. Yeah, I was definitely sweating at this point, literally and figuratively. Here, um, I feel like I was about to say something, but I cut myself off. Here, a little, we're going to get the lore reader uh, trophy. And one little small thing is that I recommend doing is just taking this guy out right here that's like laying down. Um, take him out so that he doesn't come back up and cause you trouble later on, but yeah, I mean, not, this isn't hard at all. Like I said, every time you're shooting a, a zombie from like a distance too, don't move, don't waste any steps, just remain stationary, like the classic RE, and you should be fine, you know, getting through this, but yeah, once you feel like you've put enough into that guy's body, um... And here we're at like an hour 53. We have plenty of time. On your B run, by the way, you have to, in order to get an S rank, you got to beat the game in three hours, not three and a half. You have to beat it basically 30 minutes faster. So this is the last log right here. Not that. This right here. Claire's note. Leon, I have to take a little detour to help this girl I found. If I don't save her, I hate to think what might happen. You go on ahead. You're almost out of the city now. Don't worry about me. I'll make it out. Promise. Claire. And boom. There we go. Lore Explorer. You have to play through the game at least four times in order to get the Lore Explorer uh, trophy. It's really fucking tedious here um, in, that, in that trophy, to be honest. But here in this part, um, I figured I'd walk you guys through this. It's not that hard of a part, to be honest. But like I said, if you've been doing like minimal exploration, but you know, trying to scavenge and whatnot, you should have plenty of like shotgun bullets and um, uh, lightning hawk bullets. Uh, I would recommend taking this guy out because sometimes l when you're coming back through here after you've solved the puzzle and everything, that's that guy is going to lunge at you. And if you come up here onto this piece of cover here to try and get away from him, this guy is going to fucking get up and cause problems. So, yeah, just take him out uh, ahead of time, you know, and um, 
grab the knife and everything and um yeah i'm basically just gonna use the uh lightning hawk on this guy it only takes four shots if his eye is exposed it only takes four shots to to kill him completely um but then there's another guy that honestly i i found a way to actually kind of trick him a little bit and i'm figured i would you know show it to you guys because i thought it was valuable you know but yeah i'm trying to use the shotgun here watch out for these little guys that he deploys keep an eye out for them he's very slow so he's going to take a long time to get up to you like like period so if you know that those little guys are fucking coming at you just pull your sidearm out and take them out you know here i ran out and i got kind of scared because i was like fuck how am i going to kill him he's going to corner me but luckily I was able to kind of like trap him here a little bit to where he de every time he got up to this <coughs> corpse, meaning he wouldn't go by this point, so I could just keep triggering him to come back, and eventually I was able to uh, take care of him, um, and then he stumbled over, and he, I tried running by him here, but it didn't work, obviously, as you can see, but it takes a lot of fucking shots to get him, but he's down, so... Yeah, and um, you're not out of the clear yet. Just run by this guy on your B run. They're going to put an F you and just throw this guy at you out of nowhere. Um, but it's fine. Just pop him in the head and run by him. Then when you solve the puzzle, get the flamethrower out. This is what I used to get through this. I didn't take any chances. I basically just used the flamethrower to take this guy out and the other guys, uh, the Gs. That's what they're called, I believe down in the water um and uh yeah i mean again if you've just been sticking to using i'm gonna keep going over it over and over and over again but if you if you've been sticking to using just the samurai's edge and the combat knife you should have plenty of resources at this point to just let loose and get through these really annoying parts um and here like i said you know when you jump down this last g is gonna run at you lunge at you and sometimes you might want to run away from him. Like, if you don't have a knife, you, you're going to want to run away from him um, and run up onto the cover. And if you don't take care of that fucking guy ahead of time, he's going to attack you, basically, and give you trouble. So, uh, I just used my knife to get by this guy, and it worked. And I basically used the flamethrower to take care of him because I didn't want to take any chances, to be honest. But yeah, when you're flaming him with the flamethrower, sorry if I'm kind of like wheezy, <coughs> he um, he won't uh, spit those little guys out at you. So here when on the second boss, this is the most annoying boss in the game, and this is where I took my second hit. Um, but if you just hit continue when you die, the crane will be out of your way here if you hit the button, and he'll do like this little like thing where he'll wave his arms up in the air and give you a little bit of time to get some shots on him that's where he got his hit on me but this guy i really honestly don't have advice for you guys just you have to be completely accurate hit his eye almost every single time keep hitting him and eventually he'll go down you'll see people watching now because this is when i live streamed this earlier hit the button again uh to get him the first time and here i'm just gonna throw a grenade at him and this actually does, I think, slow him down a little bit because it does do damage to him. So when he got up, it gave me a little bit more time for the crane to come by and basically hit him. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, here at this point, I got the lightning hawk out to try and use it on him, but I missed every single shot. But still, I was able to avoid him. And here, that was a, a BS hit where... Leon reacted, but he didn't really do any damage to me there, so we're still in caution and we're still fine. Um, but yeah, just get the infinite uh, gun out and make your shots count and also try to stay away from him. When he's doing this long chain of attacks, he usually ends it with that whole slam there. Um, and at this point, he's getting a little bit slower, so as long as you keep your distance from him, you should be fine. Now hit the button again, get the flash grenade out, and we're basically going to use it so he doesn't get up and cause us trouble. So that's basically my only tips and advice that I can give you guys on this this boss fight, um, to be honest. Really, really easy. Um, if you watch my Claire run, you, you'll know that the first part where he's 
trying to jab at you with the hands from the ceiling and everything. Um, you can just stand underneath the vents and you'll be totally fine during that part. And then just run right by him when he pulls the door open or pushes the door open. Here, I'm going to show you guys the best route, in my opinion, to take care of this. With the codes in mind, at this point in the playthrough, I have 11,175 steps, so we're getting up there. Um, we want to get through this, honestly, by saving the most amount of steps as possible. So, Because we still got the bosses where we're going to run around a lot. So, um, With the codes in mind, looking them up, just go in here, solve the chemical puzzle right away. Make sure you grab the dispenser, dispenser cartridge. I'm sorry, I am stuttering. Uh, yeah, solve the puzzle and uh, yeah, I mean this is something that I didn't show in either my Leon or I believe my Claire run at all. Um, but um, there's an easy way to get through this. You basically just come down here and before we turn the power on, we're going to take out all of the zombies because the liquors don't come out until you get to the uh, like lab, basically, um, or like the freezing room where you freeze the, the cartridge. But uh, yeah, just take the zombies out here with the Samurai's Edge like I do and, um, you know, obviously make sure they're dead and everything, you know, don't, don't get, don't do this until they're not dead. The reason why you guys want to take these guys out is because we're going to be going a different route than what the game wants us to do, but it's a quicker route that'll save you a lot of steps and you won't have to worry about wasting too many steps and you'll be able to just get this done like literally right away, you know? I'm telling you, this is so much quicker if you just look up the codes, you know? It's going to be the B run codes, by the way, because this is our B run. But if it's the A run co uh, codes, just look the A run codes up and you'll have no problem here. But this thing is in a different place in your B run, as you guys know. It's really, really hard to miss. It's actually really easy to get. It's right, it's on your path, basically. It's when you first go into that big room with the long walkways and everything. It's like right next to the soldier, basically. But um, yeah, just keep walking here. The liquors do not come out until you get um, pretty much up here to where the door is. Um, and then at this point, we already have the power on, so we're chilling. Just walk in there. Don't mind the liquor. Then go into the freezing room and basically get this done. Um, and... Uh, Instead of going the way the game wants us to, which is basically right where the liquor came from and up the stairs and everything, which is a lot more dangerous and wastes a lot more steps, we're going to instead um, basically go back the way we came and we're just going to walk right by them. And we don't even have to worry about them because honestly, if you are silent and you walk right by them, you're totally fine. If you take the zombies out ahead of time, you can get through this like no problem. You know, like the zombies are honestly the worst part. Like if they're still alive, you're going to go through hell getting through here. But this is like the route, in my opinion, that is going to save you the most amount of steps. And yeah, the liquors do aggro there. But at that point, you know, I was already safe. So there is one guy that you do have to kind of stun to get by here. Um, but... You don't have to kill them because as soon as you put the dispenser cartridge in, it's going to uh, take these guys out or immobilize them, essentially. So yeah, just put the thing in and you know watch this whole cutscene that you annoyingly can't skip, I don't think. Yeah, I think you do have to actually watch this. Actually, I might be wrong. You might be able to skip this, to be honest. I don't know. But yeah, um, since this is your B, even though this is your B run, uh, in in our B run, nothing happened as Claire. Here, since we're playing as Leon, Mr. X is still going to come after us here. Uh, but this part is super easy. So literally just take the route that I take and you should be fine. Um, there's like one really close call I had with him where he could have hit me, but I ended up being like totally fine. Yeah, he's going to come through the glass Stun this guy, don't go left. Stun this guy, go down here. 
and then stun that guy in front of you. Don't go left up here because that's exactly where he is. That was the close call I was talking about. And I don't know what happened there. I think I shot him, and right as I shot him in the bulb, he fucking uh, it triggered an animation, but it had literally stunned him like just at the right time. Here, it's totally fine if you use your knife to get by this guy. Just make sure it's not your infinite knife because, remember, you need that, you know. I mean, and that guy you should be able to just run right by like no problem. Uh, that's the one, like, part towards the end of the game that I think is, like, the most dangerous where you can take the most amount of damage. So here, we're going to get through this entire fight without basically um, going, like, taking any hits at all. And this is really annoying. I don't really have the best advice for you guys here. Just... Keep your distance from him, and if he's going to do that jump attack, either run out of the way or run underneath him. Sometimes if you can see um, basically what arm he's attacking you with and you react quick enough, you can like go underneath him. But that's not always a guarantee that you're going to get by him without getting hit. But yeah, here just stand still and unload into him basically. You know, you can get through this first part. like of You can get through the... Those first three critical points with the shotgun, each in two hits, very easily. And then at this point, he is a little bit dumber and a little bit slower because his health is depleting. So, like, he is getting weaker and not as, um, as strong as he was in the beginning. So, yeah, just keep your distance here. Um, if you feel like you got a shot there, take it. Um, and then for his arm, I, I like to wait for him to, you know, I keep my distance from him, but I like to wait for him to do this slam attack here where it gives you just enough time to basically take the eye out and then, um, <clears throat> keep shooting him here. Don't stop shooting him. Even if he gets up, he is not going to attack you here because this is the third phase of the fight. No matter what you do, no matter how close to him you are, he is not going to attack you here. The reason why he's not going to attack you here is because he's basically going to go and just rip the door off. And while he's in the middle of that whole animation, uh, run around and search for what you can. And um, yeah, at this point, it's basically just... I still have a flash. At this point, it's basically just down to our shots, you know? Uh, making sure we're hitting all those shots and we're not fucking up. Um, but... uh. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's not a fun fight. I do not like the boss fights in this game at all. They're kind of like skill-based, but they're skill-based in a really, really annoying way. Sadly, I'll never know how easy they are on the easiest difficulty because every single run that I did for this game involved me playing through it on hardcore or standard, which was like, you know, it was what it was, but I made it, you know. So, I mean, just keep shooting him here. A lot of the times you could run right by him there and he won't hit you because at this point he's really, really slow with his attacks. And he's not even, like, attacking us here. He's just attacking the air, basically, because his health is getting lower, you know? And that's one thing I've noticed about this guy and the Tyrant, as you're about to see in a sec. Um, they both operate under the whole, like, the more damage they take... Uh, the more the weaker they get and the slower they get so yeah i almost have him at this point um he's almost down um and yeah at this point i was cutting it really close with the fucking steps honestly i was like just like man am i gonna fucking do it and yeah we did it we got him <coughs> now everything if you do everything the way i just did it right there you know, you should be fine. You should have enough ammo up until this point because you've been using the Samurai's Edge for most of it, only for certain encounters. Um, and basically, loot the area here. Get everything you need here because this is everything you basically need to um, get through the rest of this. Mainly, you're going to want to get that Flashbang, the Lightning Hawk ammo. That particularly helped me out. All of the handgun ammo does help. But I think there are there's one grenade in here and there's two flashbangs in here, I believe. So, yeah, just loot the area. You're only going to go through about 100 steps. And that sounds like a lot, but 
it really isn't. What you really need in this room here is what I just picked up there, the flamethrower ammo. That is going to help us out immensely. It's going to help us get through basically the remaining the remainder of the tyrant boss, um, which is like there's another trophy I had to get for basically beating him with five plus minutes remaining on the clock. So pick up that second flashbang and um, yeah, um, we can discard this now, but um. Yeah, I did like 100 steps there. I was cutting it really close at this point, but I did all right. I'll walk you guys through this anyway, even though I, I don't really particularly find it that hard. I'll just walk you guys through it anyway. I'd recommend also, duh, also utilizing your saves and reloading saves if you feel like you're not in a good state and you're not going to get through it. Just reload the save, honestly. It's better to do that and redo everything than to, uh, you know, um, basically... Uh, get all the way to the end and not get all of these trophies that I still have yet to get, you know, at this point personally. But those guys upstairs, you just have to stun them and run right by them. Very easy. I tried running right by Mr. X here, but it didn't work. So this is all really, really easy and self-explanatory. I should not have to really explain this too much to you guys. But yeah, this next upcoming boss fight is was, for me the the hardest i think i would say because i was fighting him for at least you know like an hour hour and a half two hours max you know it was a long fucking time it probably wasn't that long but it felt like that long so here just follow everything i do here and if you play exactly the way i play which i know is not easy to do everyone is different um, you should have no problem getting through this barely off the skinny from the skin of your teeth. But equip the flash, throw the flash, equip the grenade, throw the grenade at him, and then equip the flash again, and throw the flash at him. And now we're gonna unload the two lightning hawk bullets in him, and then we're gonna get the flamethrower out, and we're just gonna unload on him with the flamethrower. Keep in mind, you want to always keep your distance from him, and if he does that jump attack, run out of the way. Don't run underneath him like you do with G. It's not going to work. Um, so, um, yeah, I took my last hit there. I was really nervous that I wasn't going to make it through this. Um, but this is really stressful. But, like, basically, this is all, you know, either on a timer. You could, run, you know, wait this out. Or, you know, which I couldn't because I needed to get the trophy. Um, if you just unload all of these... Uh, these flamethrower rounds into him you know like the area around you will collapse a lot faster and you know if that big piece of rubble is down there just at this point just unload on him with the pistol and eventually as soon as the cutscene happens i would recommend uh doing essentially what i do uh always interrupt him when he's about to do that attack because it's super dangerous if you're using the flamethrower on him you won't have to worry about it grab the rpg run out of the way and do your best to avoid him here and then boosh in the blink of an eye we got that and i still have the uh trophies for a small carbon footprint and frugalis intact here at this point because i'm about to check my steps and i still have like at least 800 steps that i could take and this last boss is super fucking easy. I showed this in my Claire B run, but I'll show it to you guys anyway again. You don't need anything for this boss. All you need is the knife. Literally, all you need is the knife. And it's just a waiting game. We're going to wait for him, for his eye to be completely exposed, basically. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to use the knife on him. And that's going to that's gonna kill the boss for us. And, you know, this is the best way to do it obviously because you're not wasting steps not like it really matters we made it at this point um you can shoot him if you want it doesn't really matter um but here this is what i what i do and this works for me at this point the area around you is going to become literal hell because he's getting close when his eye comes out wait wait for him wait for him to like slump down like that once and then he's going to slump down one more time and then the eye is going to fully come out here. And when you're hitting him, make sure you can see the little yellow, like, you know, like goo, like 
squirts indicating that you're basically hitting him with the knife and you should be able to get him in like literally three hits so here we go leon s kennedy we got an s rank two hours and 38 minutes frugalist and i basically just kept reloading saves it took me like 10 hours to get through this actually and a small carbon footprint and we're about to earn the platinum right now there it is raccoon city native this was a really amazing fucking wonderful moment for me personally getting to this point um but uh yeah we only have one thing left to do now in this game so i did unlock some stuff as you can see i am kind of looking through some of the bonuses here seeing what we unlocked and what we didn't unlock ultimately i've gone over this multiple times i'm not really huge on this stuff as long as i get the platinum and all the trophies done and i do every single mode and get all those trophies and everything i don't really care about this stuff to be honest maybe one day i'll come back and do it again but it would involve me playing through the story more and at this point in time i literally just can't do that because i'm so like strapped for time at this point like i I'm on a really, really tight schedule um, with these videos this week. But, uh, yeah, I'm basically just looking through everything that we have and don't have here. But, um, yeah, um, next time on the RE2 remake, we are going to be doing No Way Out. So I can't wait for you guys to see that, and I can't wait to show it. So if you enjoyed this, please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys then. Peace.